the first person you have to motivate and get the intention clear before you try to get somebody's attention is you. In this episode, host Kevin Roger talks the power of great storytelling with Hollywood Uber producer, UCLA professor, and Tell to Win author, Peter Gooper. This is Cross Section. We're here with Peter Goober, a professor in the School of Theater, Film, and Television at UCLA, and a long-standing Hollywood film executive, and chairman and CEO of Mandalay Entertainment Group. His book is Tell to Win, Connect, Persuade, and Triumph with the Hidden Power of Story, coming from Crown Business. Thank you for being here, Mr. Goober. My great pleasure. So you've written a book on the hidden power of story uh, in business and elsewhere. What led you to that subject? Well. I was a storyteller uh -huh. for you know three and a half decades uh, in movies, in television, in sports. A professor at UCLA for that same time, teaching it. And um, one day I had a lot of failures in my life and successes in my life. And one day I began, after a particular failure, to wonder what's the difference between success and failure? Well, is there a secret sauce? Well, having more of one and less of the other, and having more joy and less pain. What was it? Was there one? And it came at a point where um, somebody said, hey, that didn't work. Well, what didn't you do? I, what, you forgot to tell them a story. I said, a story? What do you mean a story? He said, you just gave facts, figures. You just fired all the bullet points at them. And I don't know if they really got it. Of course there was. All the facts and figures speak for themselves. He says, I never saw facts and figures speak. And I realized all of a sudden, here I was in the room, face to face, breathing the same air with somebody like yourself. And I was just firing those data points and analytics and PowerPoints and all the decks and everything like that. And I never ignited their interest. I never ignited their passion. I never connected with them. Hmm. I was transaction oriented. And I began to decode my life and my experiences and found that where I succeeded mostly, I used that power, the power of telling purposeful stories, not storytelling. And where I failed, I often failed to use it. And I thought, well, how do I have it? Where did it come from? And then I realized something by my own study and research and talking to people that it, it was always there in me. It was hidden in me. In fact, I hid it. In fact, the world hid it because they thought it was kid stuff, soft stuff, but it was the real stuff. You open the book with a revealing lesson on how not to tell a story. This was the attempt to get the mayor of Las Vegas to buy into your plan for a stadium. Right. What did you learn through that? I, I basically learned that when um, you do that, when you fire bullet points, or when you tell your, your information, you're in the information you know, dispersal business, mm -hmm. uh, you're transactionally oriented. You're looking for the transaction. You're trying to move somebody to do something based upon those figures and facts. You're really perspiring them rather than inspiring them. Mm -hmm. And they're never going to remember or recall those facts and figures. In fact, they're not even moved by them. In fact, they often don't even look at them. They give them somebody else to say, is it correct? All right? And there's nothing wrong with facts and figures. Facts and figures are critical. Information, data is absolutely, analytics absolutely crucial. But they're, they're a support player. They're, they're, a, they're a secondary tertiary character in the drama. The idea of being able to narrate the information inside of a story, being able to move somebody emotionally, being able to have that, then the information is bonded with the emotion and it becomes memorable resonant and actionable. And most interesting, it's how the people pay it forward. They don't tell the other people the information. They tell them the story of their experience with you, or what you want to do, your passion, your involvement, your interest, and you're engaging them in that form. And so you're turning them into, in a sense, participants rather than passengers. And they own it differently. And when they own it differently, they tell it forward differently. And that's the famous word of mouth. What are the essential elements of a purposeful story? Well. There are navigational stakes, you know, and the idea is um, the elements of it um, taken together do create magic. They were, they, they, there, is a, there is a magic by the extrapolation of all the elements, but any one can be a game changer. So we're talking about telling purposeful stories, the tell first, how to tell it, not what to tell first, how to tell it, and then what to tell as a story. In the telling part, there are a bunch of navigational stakes that are easy to remember, easy to recall, easy to use, because we're wired that way. It's in our DNA. It's not something that, a gift from me to you. It's something, I just shined a light on mine, and looked at it and followed the breadcrumbs and talked to pe people in my lives and my experience where I failed many times and succeeded many times and saw what 
what they were. For example, most people think that when you tell a purposeful story to move somebody, you have to motivate them. Motivate them. You're in control of them. You're controlling nobody. Maybe you're in control of yourself. So the first person you have to motivate and get the intention clear before you try to get somebody's attention is you. So if you don't believe it, if you don't own it, if you don't feel it's part of you, if it's, if it's not ingested in you, then they're never going to digest it. In other words, the idea is first get yourself in state. Think about all great athletes. They get themselves in state. They believe what they, they're going to win. They believe they, they have a, a value. They believe there's something purposeful in what they're doing. If you don't radiate that, if you don't, it's not a question of confidence. It's a question of getting your integrity together because your authenticity must shine through before your first words are spoken. So recognize, don't hide your goal. You're there for a purpose. If you're not proud of it, if you're not willing to put it out front, don't go in the room. Success and failure are, are, are millimeters apart. Inside every great success is the seeds of failure, and every failure, the most abysmal failure are the seeds of great success. And that's the truth, because when you really think where it is, it's in the last five yards. It's, in the, it's the last inch. Those are where the real successes are, when people you know, are willing to fail to have great success. You're going to fail. You're going to fail at every aspect of, of your life. Failure is part and parcel of it. But you're really in avoiding, in trying to avoid failure, if you move back to the 50-yard line, the best you can get is a field goal. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you have to be willing to, to test yourself. And when you really, really, when the chips are really down, this soft stuff is what really counts. You're watching Hollywood producer Peter Goober discuss his new book, Tell to Win, Connect, Persuade, and Triumph with the Hidden Power of Story on Cross Section. Your book is a collection of really interesting stories. Do you have a favorite uh, example of a story well told that uh, helped you get ahead? Um, one story that's you know kind of interesting is something that happened very recently. And we were in a bidding war with a lot of very powerful and formidable foes who had more resources than us, um, more capacity to do things than, than myself uh, and the partner, Joe Lacob. And um, it was down to the crunch time. And uh, everybody had their bids and the prices were all probably pretty much the same. And uh, the owner of the team, we owned it for 16 to 17 years up in the Bay Area, the Golden State Warriors. The owner of the team um, was just pondering what to do. And um, he had all the bids from all the people. And uh, he had traveled back east with his son to go to take him to schools, to show him schools. And my partner was feeling the, the sense that, you know, well, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. You know, now we've done all of, all of our bidding and organizational work and did all the due diligence. And I said to him, you know something? He has to hand this legacy off. You just finished telling me how you'll be the best person to hand his legacy to, that he'll protect this franchise and that, that we will be um, uh, best suited for him for all those intangible reasons. The reasons that he doesn't want to leave it with somebody that won't make it better than his, his time that won't be purposeful in the execution of that stewardship. I said, you make a really good story. I said, get on your plane, he had a plane, and fly back east and see him back east on those grounds and just tell him that. Hmm. So he said to me, I'm gonna fly back all the way for a 15 minute meeting? In the, in, in the room? Yes, in the room, with his son there, sitting there. Go and do it, breathe the same air, directly with him. Tell him the story you just told me. Tell him that story. Not the facts and figures and the numbers and prices. Tell him that story. I don't know if I can do that. He said, you got to do it. That's what you got to do. He flew back there and did it, and we won. Now, was that the difference maker? No one ever really knows. Do I believe it was? Absolutely, positively. Not because I, I'm an apostle for that, but because I believe that always is a triumph factor. It always is. Because you tap into the emotional quality of an individual, you open up their heart and they become responsive in a unique way, a different way than if you just try to aim for their wallet. Let's turn a little bit to the news. Who in the, you know, who in the news right now do you think is demonstrating this real powerful grasp of the importance of story? Uh, the interesting one is a person who you would think is really a good teller of purposeful stories, and that's President Obama. <laughs> but I think he's got the accent on the wrong syllable. When he first was politicking, he was one of us talking about us and where we should go. As a leader, he's talking at us. He's using the same, a lot of the same narrative tools, but he's talking at us. He doesn't have us in the boat with him. 
And he has another challenge, too. You look at stories, how uh, unbelievable they are. If you look at the challenge of how, you know, um, he's bedeviled by something which it shouldn't be. More than 50% of the population, these polls, think that he's a mu Muslim. There's nothing wrong with being a Muslim at all, zero. But they have that perception of him. And he's not. He's Christian. And um, you wonder how that story, that backstory or that perceptive story, uh, either invades, colors, colludes, or changes the story he's trying to tell. Which makes the po point is that everybody has a backstory about everybody else, and everybody has their own backstory. And you have to stand guard at the portals of your mind, of your own backstory that doesn't sabotage you. And the other idea is, is to understand what the backstory people have of you and recognize, is it, is it suborning your interests? How can an ordinary person start applying the principles of purposeful storytelling to their own lives? Okay, I think that's the right question. It, it's, it's so simple and so easy. And if you think of it as a tool like, think of the word magic, mm -hmm. the idea of magic, and people think that's, there's some magic to it. The magic is inside of you. You already got it. There's no gift from me to you. You got it. I didn't wire you. You're wired in that beam because that's the way it works. So that's the first thing you have to recognize you got it. Um, the second thing, what is it? It's the ability to tell what you want somebody to do, join and participate. You have that. You do it every day, all the time. All you have to do is look at some of the elements of it and say, how can I do it better? All right? Magic, M-A-G-I-C, anyone can change it. What is it? Motivate, not the other person, yourself. Get in state. Your audience, understand them as audience, not clients, customers, patrons. Think of them as audiences aim at their heart. To a goal, know what your goal is, pride it, don't hide it. In other words, understand you have a goal for being in the room. If you don't have the goal, imagine a salesman walking into a room and not know what his goal is or her goal is. Be insane. We're all salesmen of our ideas, of our companies, of our charities, of our churches. And then interactive. Make it an engagement. Make it a dialogue, not a monologue. Leave room for the other person to participate. Let them own it themselves. Let them bring something to it because that's the way they'll pay it forward. And then find any story you want. It can be any story. It can be the story of something in your life to load the information, data, and facts and the benefit you have for the other person into it. Use that to open their heart and then it'll resonate in a unique way. Thank you so much for coming. Great, here. my pleasure. Our guest has been Peter Guber, whose book is Tell to Win, Connect, Persuade, and Triumph with the Hidden Power of Story. Mm -hmm.